players are playing for. And same too for the Pitt Panthers. Pitt wearing pink, Notre Dame in white with the pink trim and some pink hair in the form of <laughs> Hannah Hidalgo on the occasion. Dang it, Jen, I forgot to dye my hair pink for today. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> you got the pink though. Hidalgo will take the first shot. Kylie Watson coming off a great game. The senior had 19 points, season high in Thursday's win at Georgia Tech. Post players have been the best part of what Pitt's done this season. Have one ACC win, got that at Virginia. Need to get a little more from their guards. Good spinning start there Good from Aislinn Malcolm. Coach Verdi told us they did need to get more from those guards, and that's a great start. We know Leah Tuking is relied upon so much for Pitt. Their guards have to get going. This Notre Dame lineup that has been beset with injuries this season, starting to look a little more full. Still some key players out, of course, Olivia Miles. We now know out for the season. Emma Risch, freshman out. But Sonia Citron is back. Westfeld is back. There you see Miles on the bench. They missed Citron for quite a few games, and the fact that they were able to continue winning for the most part without her, huge testament to Hannah Hidalgo as a true freshman leading the squad. And of course, Westfeld, such a glue player for this team as a senior. There is Westfeld playing with the mask. Leah Chu King picked up the foul on that last possession. As you see the starting lineup for the Panthers, they've had 10 different starting lineups this season as first year head coach Tori Verdi is trying to put the pieces together. Jasmine Timerson has it swatted. She's been playing more minutes here as of late. Started the last six. Hidalgo so tough to contain. She just doesn't stop. She continues after that play, gets the loose ball, and then for a lot of players, you get that loose ball, you'd hold up, you'd run some offense. She keeps going, she keeps attacking. That's what makes her so hard to defend. And right now, Hidalgo sitting on the verge of 500 points. She's at 499. And I'll have to wait at least one more free throw to see if she can reach that 500 point mark. It would be a historic mark. Let's go ahead and say when, not if she hits it. And there it is. Fastest to 500 in Notre Dame program history, doing it in this, her 21st game, surpassing the record of one Jewel Lloyd. And think of the players that have played here at Notre Dame, and no player has ever gotten to 500 faster than number three. Jayla Jordan, nice shot from the grad transfer in her fourth program. She's been putting up some big numbers lately. Six points in the last game when Pitt lost at Duke on Thursday, but it had been double figures five straight before that. She's been great for Pitt as of late. And as you mentioned, Jen, Coach Verdi, just trying to find different lineups that work and different players that can contribute around Leah to King. Look at that rebound from King inside. That's why she's one of the best rebounders in the ACC. Gets it back out to Malcolm. Malcolm's hitting those outside shots can really be a difference maker for this Pitt team. Went five for nine in a season high 19 against Georgia Tech, but since then just two for 23 from downtown. And a DeWolf circles it in for the Irish. Pittsburgh has started in a zone. They're trying to dare Notre Dame to beat them from three and basically dare Notre Dame to beat them with someone else besides Hidalgo. And that was DeWolf saying, okay, if you're gonna give me an open look, I'll knock it down. Baseline working for King. She has her first points. She's nearing a milestone as well, by the way. She is now six away from her 1,000th career point. Now Notre Dame attacking. Citron is fouled on her way to the basket. There you see Tori Verdi. First season in charge of Pitt, 13th overall. He spent the previous seven seasons at UMass. Made some program history there with the Minute Women winning the first A-10 regular season title in 2023, first tournament title in 2022. And Jen, when he took over this Pitt program, he had four players. Because he was hired later, hired in April, so many players had hit the portal. So he had four existing players on his roster, had to get some freshmen, had to get some transfer portal pieces. It's a tough situation to be in, but he's put together a roster that's been able to compete in the ACC. 
and he said, I've heard the word rebuild, I understand it, but I'm pretty impatient, I don't like it, it's <laughs> tough for me to swallow. Really trying to lay the foundation, jump ball called here, Angelica Suffren, Erica Harriman, Kelsey Reynolds, our officiating crew for this game today. Notre Dame also in a zone, started off in man-to-man, -man, now running some zone, and they are trapping Leah Tu King pretty much any time she touches the ball, similar to what Pitt's doing to Notre Dame with Hidalgo, trying to make someone else beat them. Jordan got it back after turning it over. Two on the shot clock, it never reset. Now the shot goes up, but it is a shot clock violation. Pitt's gotten off to a good start, much better start than their most recent game against Duke. And it's gonna be interesting. They wanna make Notre Dame play in the half court. And they've done a good job of that so far, have not let the Irish get out in transition, but that's just good offense right there, hitting Westbelt in the mid post. First points of the game for West Bell. She averages just under 14 for the season. It's been, just been such a consistent performer throughout her career at Notre Dame, West Bell. Malcolm stepping into the shot. And she's good on the glass too. She's not right on the ACC glass. in that category. West Bell for three, yes! Such a complete player. We talk about her rebounding ability, but can also knock down the three, can get to the rim. She can do a little bit of everything for this Notre Dame team. 7-0 Irish run. We now lead by five. Timerson being given all kinds of room. Marley Washinitz passing back out to Malcolm. Hidalgo on King, who spins, takes a contested shot and makes it. Leah Tu King, she is just so skilled, and she was not able to have these types of numbers last year, mainly because Pitt didn't use her like they are right now. Tori Verdi wants her to take as many shots as she can throughout the game because he knows how talented she is, just showing those different abilities. And look at what she did the last time against Notre Dame. She was unstoppable. And Jen, as a player, when you know you did this the last time you played a team and you're playing them again, you feel great heading into that matchup. I think it's obvious that Leah Tu King feels good yeah. about today. Yeah, it can really make a difference. Citron committing the foul on that eventual three-point play for King. Watson looking inside. KK Bransford in off the bench, has it swatted by Jayla Jordan. Timeout on the floor, Pitt hanging with number 14 Notre Dame so far. Just a two-point lead at home for the Irish. In between these two teams, well, we've talked about how Leah Tu King absolutely went off in this matchup on January 4th. Career-high 34 points for her. Notre Dame got in some foul trouble. It was getting kind of dicey late. They were already short. Citron was out for this game. But Hidalgo leading the way. She had 24 points as the Irish did indeed hang on on the road. And now here they are again, tight early in the first quarter against the Panthers. That game was so interesting. Notre Dame got off to a much quicker start than in this game, was up 12 to nothing. And then Pitt came back and took the lead at one point in the second half. So it was an odd game, but really what stood out to me was Leah Tu King. And so far, she's been able to be very effective again. Turnover, Watson traveled before Hidalgo could get that shot up. Notre Dame extending their pressure a little bit more and then dropping back into that zone yet again. Jordan calling for it inside, swings around and will go to the free throw line. They're gonna call Watson for the foul, her first. If there's a weakness with Notre Dame, it is their lack of depth. And so if you're Pittsburgh, this is great news. To get that kind of foul, a little ticky-tack foul down low, and to get another foul on one of Notre Dame's bigs is exactly what you want to do. They got Notre Dame in foul trouble in the first matchup. They want to do that again. Yeah, we talked about it earlier, but you see no Olivia Miles, no Emma Risch for the season, but Kassan Prosper still out indefinitely. Jenna Brown hasn't played this season. 
that bench is short. And you can bet Pitt very aware of that, especially with his success that they had getting the Irish in foul trouble last time around. Tie game now at 11. Matt Marshall has come on in place of Watson. Westfeld off to a good start. Westfeld calling for that basketball, looking for it in the mid post, knowing she has a much smaller player on her. She can get good looks at the high post area all night for Notre Dame. Seven points so far for Westbelt. Ball tapped away. Citron. Now from the corner, Hidalgo misses everything, and then Westbelt can't quite hang on, loses it out of bounds. Maddie Westfeld is one of the best four players in the country. So if you get her the ball at the high post area, which is where you want to get it in a zone, and then just let her go to work. She went left, hit that nice fadeaway. But she has so many things she can do if they get her the ball near that logo area. Now that was a pass attempt from King, just a bit off, a little too high as it thwacked off the front of the rim. Jen, I know we don't have this stat, because this stat is, is ridiculous, but could this be the least amount of points that Hannah Hidalgo has had through a first quarter and we're almost seven minutes in? I'm not sure, but it feels like Pitt's done a really good job of limiting her. And this zone is keeping her from being able to penetrate at will. Yeah, just one point so far for the player who's leading the ACC in scoring Hidalgo, 25 points per game. 0 for 2 from the floor so far for Hannah. What are you looking for from Pitt here in this end against this Notre Dame defense? I think they have to keep, like like they did there, getting Leah to King touches because they will double. And then things are always open out of his own if you get a double. Now King has to be a bit more poised, be able to handle that double team and pass out of it. And one of the things she can do when she knows the double's coming is make a move quicker. Go baseline quicker. Don't wait for the double to come. Make a move before it comes. Four turnovers so far for the Panthers. Bransford, too strong on the three. Marshall had it and then committed the foul. So they're gonna, actually, they're going to call Washington for the foul, her second personal. That's a massive break for Notre Dame and a really bad break for Pittsburgh. That was just kind of an innocent tangle. I, I, I wish there hadn't been a call there. DeWolf pulls up. Westbelt using the offensive glass to get another opportunity. Pitt slowing it down. What Coach Verdi talked to us about at shoot around was we want to make this a half court game. We want to slow it down, prevent this from becoming a transition game. And they're doing a good job of that. Even that situation right there, Jen, the fact that that's a dead ball, that it goes out of bounds, that benefits Pitt. You don't let Notre Dame get up and down. So if you do turn it over, which will happen against Hannah Hidalgo at times, <laughs> if it can be a dead ball turnover, that is ideal because then Notre Dame can't run off of it. And Hidalgo, number one in the nation in steals. 103 steals on the season for the freshman who Neil Ivey was telling us absolutely loves defense. Yes, yeah, she could score, but she loves defense. And speaking of scoring, Westbell leading the way now with nine for the Irish. Westbell looks so good so far in this game, just showing everything she has in her bag. So poised down low, not letting the defense speed her up. Good quick pass out from King that time. Gets it to Bella Perkins, who had come in off the bench. Three second violation, though, is another Panther turnover. Ivy and her staff all decked out in pink. Best dressed staff in the country? Uh, I mean, I don't even think it's close, honestly. I think they make a claim. Citron, nothing but net. Maybe a little bit of rim, but she gets it in. The way to beat a zone is to hit some outside shots so that things open up a little more on the inside. A big three for Sonia Citron. Perkins.
transfer from USC. Spent a couple of years there before joining the Panthers this season. Six on the shot clock now. Malcolm taking it into the basket. And Westbelt on the glass. Citron. King and Westbell, that's going to be a fun battle to watch this entire game, especially when it comes to rebounds. Those two are very similar. How hard they play, similar skill sets, both seniors. They've battled quite a few times in this league over the last four years. About a 10 second difference, shot clock and game clock. Malcolm, Ooh. yes. Step back from Ace Malcolm at the top of the key. Big time shot from the sophomore. Final few seconds of quarter number one. Hidalgo. Hidalgo limited to just one point, but some threes starting to fall, Kelly Gramlich. You know I love the three. You see for Georgia Tech, um, recently passed away after a battle with cancer. It is a disease that affects so many of us, and the great work that the KO Cancer Fund is doing to help fight all women's cancer, certainly something to get behind. It definitely is. And of course, an ACC connection with Coach Yao being a legendary head coach at NC State. So it always just feels like the ACC has a connection to this cause. Love the pink and the Tasha Butt shirt, who was the head coach at Georgetown and passed away last year. Played at Tennessee, head coach with, uh, or assistant coach with Nell Fortner at Georgia Tech. That's right, yep. Just uh, someone who was around the women's basketball community and um, left us way too soon. And that's what the KEL Fund is doing, trying to raise money to help fight this terrible disease. Maddie Westbell just getting cleaned up. There's some blood on the court. Ooh. Block from King. Wow, what a block. Yeah, with authority there against Watson. Leah King giving up four inches in that matchup, but didn't seem to matter on that play. Hidalgo working the defense. Can she turn it into offense? She is fouled. Leah King just picked up her second. But how about this? Yeah, back-to-back -back plays with Leah King in the play defensively. Great block, and she gets the ball. And then just a Great job by Hannah Hidalgo, who is so, she has such good body control that she's able to draw a foul while also getting a good look at the rim. And it's almost impossible to defend Hannah Hidalgo at the rim without fouling because she's just so poised around the rim. And for her size, Jen, she knows how to use her body to block the ball to be able to get it up there. Nine time ACC Rookie of the Week hits the free throw, has another one coming. Thursday, we've got a full slate starting with ACC PM at four, then a doubleheader women's basketball, the featured matchup. We've got Virginia Tech, NC State, that's at eight o'clock, top 25 matchup, followed by, of course, nothing but net coverage. You can only find it one place here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. A little bit of frustration, I think, showing on our freshman today. She's frustrated on the offensive end, and she's doing what great players do. She's taking that frustration and turning it into effort on the defensive end. That was a really good play to drop down and double, get the jump ball inside. Perkins gets it over for the three-point attempt. Timerson can't hit. Battle as a couple of players go down to the floor. Jump ball called again. Hidalgo is trying to grab that rebound and go. And the way she had her body situated, she was already looking to run instead of grabbing the ball. I think that's what Coach Ivy is telling her from the sideline. There's two points in the game for Hidalgo. She averages 25. She's coming off back-to-back -back games in which she set the Notre Dame freshman scoring record. You thought what she did against UConn was impressive. Well, how about what she followed up with 35, one more point. In the win against Georgia Tech. Here she goes, speeding to the basket. Another rare miss from Hidalgo. She had a decent look there. She's got to make sure that her frustration doesn't get the best of her right now. Shot up and in from Gabby Hutcherson. Ohio State transfer in her second year with the Panthers. Hutcherson and off the bench along with Rapalucci Ayadel.
three point Irish lead. Citron, that's it batted away. Still no Maddie West, no Maddie Westfeld has come back out after she had jersey cleaned up. Timmerson picking up the foul here. That's three team fouls already on Pittsburgh in, in this quarter. <laughs> and we're only, we're less than two minutes in. So Notre Dame, they should be aware, continue to attack. They can get to the free throw line if we get to five. There is Hidalgo attacking. She'll go back to the free throw line. Two for four so far today from the line, Hidalgo. It sounds like Coach Ivy's message in that huddle between the first and second quarter was attack. Attack the rim. Take a three if it's there, but she wanted to see, at least I'm assuming I wasn't in that huddle, but the way Notre Dame is attacking the rim, it seems like that was the message. And certainly some frustration that Hidalgo is having to try to figure out how to put aside here. Typically almost an 80% free throw shooter. She's at 50% right now, three for six from the line. Sometimes we have to remember that she is just a freshman. Well, she makes us forget quite yes, often. Yes, I know. <laughs> One of the best in the country and certainly up for freshman of the year awards, I think you could consider nationally and in the conference takes it away here, does it with the defense, look it up for DeWolf for the assist. How about that, Hannah Hidalgo? What a steal. She applied such good ball pressure that when Timerson went to make the pass, Hidalgo was there, which is just an incredible play. And then an excellent pass up the floor to DeWolf. I mean, she is locked in right now. Tried to get the steal, does get called for the foul. She's hot. She is, and then here's the play where Timerson gets past Hidalgo. It, it wasn't even a pass, it was, she got her on the shot from our angle. I thought she tried to pass it, wow. And then a great pass up the floor to DeWolf. What I was saying about Hidalgo is, She's frustrated offensively, and we know that as she heads to the bench, but some players just sulk. It seems like she takes her frustration out <laughs> defensively, which she has to worry about fouls, and I understand that, but that's a good characteristic to have. That, that was just her first foul, by the way. She's on the bench at the moment. DeWolf playing some defense now. Four-year player at Fordham. And Hidalgo really upset with herself on yeah. the bench. She's such a competitor. I was joking with you and our producer that I went on a Hannah Hidalgo YouTube search last night, went down a rabbit hole of just <laughs> different things, that different videos on her, and it seems she is just a tenacious competitor. Wants to win, almost a perfectionist, and you have to control that sometimes and be able to harness it. But you can tell her will to win and her will to play well is so strong. It's going to be a factor in this game, one way or the other. Five to shoot now for the Panthers. Hutcherson passes it back out. Got to get the shot off. They do. It did hit the rim. It's going to stay on this end of the floor with the Panthers. And that's a one-on-one -on -one box out situation with Nat Marshall and Ayadell. And Ayadell won out. Nat Marshall, you'd think with her size advantage in that situation, four inches could grab that ball, but Ayadell fought for it and was able to tip it off of Marshall to keep the ball with Pitt. Can the Panthers take advantage of this second opportunity? Another bite at the apple here, thanks to Iadell, has it now, six to shoot again. They've had a tough time getting a look early in the shot clock. Marshall defending this time. There is a foul on the floor against Notre Dame. A little bit of a late call. It was on DeWolf, her second. Notre Dame back to some man-to-man -man on that possession. Looked like they were switching almost everything because Nat Marshall ended up on Malcolm. Single digits on the shot clock again. This is a foul against the Panthers now. That's five team fouls on Pittsburgh. They won't shoot in this scenario, but the next team foul, Notre Dame will be shooting free throws for the rest of the quarter. Foul on the screen here on Iadell. That's a moving screen. Good, good call by the official. No Hidalgo on the floor at the moment for Notre Dame. Westfeld misses everything. 
Pitt has made this game rather ugly thus far, and I would yeah. say that's to their favor, right? Well, not ugly, yes, but I think just slower is what they wanted to do. The, the pretty plays we love from Notre Dame is when they get out in transition and are running, and for the most part, Pitt has not let them do that. And Pitt's been able to stay in this game. If Pitt can make a few more shots on this other end, it could truly change things. And Ayadel has made an impact since coming in off the bench. The junior transfer. This is her fourth school. She's a junior college All-American a couple of times over. Come off the bench, got the rebound here. Fouled on the putback. She'll go to the free throw line. And that foul was on Marshall, her first. Has her first point of the game. I'll tell you about Wednesday night's ACC Network men's basketball doubleheader. Louisville and Syracuse will start us off at 7 Eastern. Then let's see how number seven Duke can bounce back, hosting Notre Dame at Cameron Indoor. Jen, one thing that Neil Ivy talked to us about on uh, yesterday, I believe that was when we chatted with her about her team was rebounding. Rebounding was such a big point of emphasis for her. Notre Dame right now is losing the rebounding battle by 11. Wow. Pittsburgh's done a great job on the defensive glass and specifically on the offensive glass too. And Notre Dame has not been able to keep them off the O boards. That's been a big difference maker in this one, Jen. Timeout called on the floor by Pitt. Nat Marshall, special meaning behind that number 15 in pink. We'll tell you about it when we come back. Coach, much on the mind of Nat Marshall, especially in this Think Pink game, but she said she will always wear that number 15. That was Claire Droche's number when she played great player at Boston College mm -hmm. collegiately. Yeah, big time player when Boston College won the Big East, I believe 2004. So she was a great player at BC, and Nat Marshall had her name on the back of her shooting shirt as well pregame. Wow. As the shot clock was nearing its end, washing its hits. And remember, Tori Birdie called the timeout, was able to draw up that play. He's a great X's and O's type of coach and paid off in that possession. Two point game. Pitt hanging around just like they did in that first matchup with Notre Dame, winning the rebounding battle and hitting some timely threes. Hidalgo is back. That's her first field goal. It's only a matter of time before Hannah Hidalgo gets going and feels like she calmed down a bit when she went to the bench. A few coaches talking to her. I know she was frustrated with her start, but looks like she's back and feeling good. Washington's hit that last three. A little short this time on the attempt. Ayadel, that's going to be her third. Came in a little too strong on the loose ball. You could tell she was frustrated with herself. She knew it was her third foul and that it was, frankly, just an unnecessary foul. And now Coach Verdi has to put Leah King back in with those two fouls, so she has to be careful. And Notre Dame shooting free throws for the rest of this quarter on every foul. Notre Dame as a team shooting 76% from the free throw line. They average 15 makes from the line per game. And as Citron is on the line, Hidalgo getting a little conversation with someone who knows a thing or two about playing point guard and handling all that comes with it here at Notre Dame. Coach Ivy always has a really close relationship with her point guard. She was a great point guard here at Notre Dame, has her jersey in the rafters and talking to Hannah Hidalgo about what she wants to see. Hutcherson, Malcolm turned the corner. Hidalgo got a hand on it. A couple of Irish players did. You talk about that legacy of point guards. Neil Ivy right at the top, right? And then Hannah Hidalgo if you jump to the bottom. But don't skip over everything in the middle. Look at that legacy of point guards and guards coming through this Irish program. These are really just the PGs because there's been so many other great guards as well. Just saw the news that Skylar Diggins signed with the Seattle Storm, so she's going to play with Jewel Lloyd. 
when they just like when they played together here at Notre Dame. So the fact that Olivia Miles is over there on the bench injured for Notre Dame, I just can't wait and imagine to see what it's going to be like when Olivia Miles and Hannah Hidalgo play together. That talk about must watch television. Yeah. I I just want to see what it looks like. I think right now, Neil Ivy curious to see how her young star can handle this because Hidalgo just picked up her second yeah. foul. We know she loves to kickstart her offense with her defense. The angle where we are sitting, I've been able to look right in her eyes and it's terrifying, frankly. <laughs> you can tell the fire that is inside oh, yeah. of her defensively. But can she control it enough to keep herself on the floor? Great point, Jen. And as a young player, this is one of those things that she hasn't had as much experience with dealing with the fouls and also dealing with a slow start. So how does she push through that and continue to positively impact her team? Seven point Irish lead. Bransford, the big offensive rebound, uses her left well. Pitt's been dominating the glass. That was a big rebound for Notre Dame. And finally, some second chance points for the Irish. Largest lead of the game now for Notre Dame at nine. King calling for it. She's been quiet at five points early, now driving against Westbelt. Good finish. That's the play that they ran so much against Notre Dame in that first matchup. Get the ball to King around the high post and let her go right off the dribble. And now. King a point away from a thousand for her career. Washington's on the break, holds up. Westbelt. Another rebound. Her fifth of the game. Hidalgo, some contact. It is a blocking foul as much of the what close to 8,000, 7,000 in attendance held their breath a little bit as Hidalgo was driving. was against Washington, it's her third. Let's her take another look at this, Jen, because my reaction just sitting here was that that was an offensive foul. And I, I think that is an offensive foul. The way she extended her arm, lowered her shoulder. I, beneficial call there for Notre Dame, a good break for them, but my, my first indication was that should have been an offensive foul. First free throw is good. Want to tell you about our next All Access, the ACC Live. Very special one. Premieres tomorrow night. ACC student athletes and administrators from all 15 institutions traveled to Washington, D.C. last year on the 60th anniversary of the March on Washington to experience and learn more about racial and gender equity. Dallin Cuff hosts this special All Access at 7 Eastern right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Hidalgo now up to eight points in the game after a couple of free throws. Jordan trying her hand at the three. King doing what she does so well, but has it tapped away. Couldn't hang on to the rebound. Offensive foul on the screen. And Notre Dame, Kylie Watson whistled for her second. And as these fouls mount for both teams, Watch how that impacts things yeah. in the second half, particularly for this def depleted Notre Dame team. Tough drive, good block, a brave block playing with the two fouls, but Watson gets it cleanly. This was a yeah, nice clean block by Kylie Watson inside. Hit with only 10 seconds on the shot clock. A little out of control. Jordan stuck with it. King couldn't get to the rebound. Hidalgo dishes it off to Citron. That was such a great play. Citron was calling for it, so Hidalgo drove her way, drove towards Citron to make the defense make a decision, and then Citron with an excellent cut to the rim. And that is why you don't want to let Notre Dame run. Exactly. So lethal in the open floor. We're about to see another play of, of what Notre Dame just did. Citron calls him for it, see? So Hidalgo dribbles her way, makes Jordan make a decision. 
and a great pass to Citron, who's basically just following her point guard, following her lead, staying in her vision so that Hidalgo can continue to see her and find her for the open layup. Nine points in this game for Citron, eight for Hidalgo, along with four assists. Here is Citron, and a few more. Sonia Citron continues to look more and more like herself. How about efficiency for her? 12 points on just four field goal attempts because she's been so great at the free throw line. What a disarray on the defensive end, and Malcolm taking advantage with the three. Her second, she's got eight for Pitt. Pitt broke the pressure. Notre Dame wanted to apply pressure after the make, and Pitt handled it well. Everybody looking at the referee. It will stay on this end of the floor. 20 seconds on the shot clock for Notre Dame. Westfeld. Coach Ivy just took Hidalgo out in that break just to make sure she doesn't pick up the third foul. I, I think that's a smart move. About six seconds between shot clock and game clock. Panthers facing a double digit deficit at the moment. Looking for a good possession here before the half ends. Malcolm picked up the dribble, need a shot. Timberson. And that is going to be a foul on the floor. Jordan going for the rebound for Pitt. Oh, wow. Yeah, it went against Notre Dame. It looked like it maybe was going to go against Jordan. Instead, it is on Marshall, her second. So Jordan will go to the free throw line. She's two for two so far. the worst kind of foul to pick up if you're Notre Dame in that situation had a chance to rebound the ball and in the quarter now you have another post player pick up a second foul and put Pittsburgh on the free throw line. Jordan now four for four from the line has six in the game when she adds that secondary scoring punch this Pitt Panther team is certainly a lot more dangerous to go along with what King usually brings. Final shot attempt, perhaps coming now. Citron takes it at the buzzer. 36-27, our halftime score. The Irish in the lead, but Kelly. Freeze to get back in this game. Well, and you know, you and I were talking about this as we came in. We're just turning the corner in the halfway point of the ACC season, but think about what's at stake. Obviously, Pitt needs to try to pick up some ACC wins, but Notre Dame here at home, yeah, they're the favorite team, but you were saying this is a game they really cannot afford to lose. Right now, when you look at bracketology, uh, they are a five seed, and so they cannot afford to lose to a Pitt at home. It would really hurt their net ranking, hurt where they are. In the women's game, one through four, so the top 16 teams in the country, the one through four seeds, host in the NCAA tournament, and that is so important. So Notre Dame fighting for that with every game they play. Charlie Cream currently with the Irish as a five seed. I chuckled a little when I brought it up because I know legendary Notre Dame head coach Muffin McGraw is watching, <laughs> and she never wants to talk bracketology in February. As a former coach, I understand it, but as media people, Jen, of course we're going to talk. It. Couple of defensive plays on either end to start off our third quarter. Hidalgo looking for the offense. There it is. Hannah Hidalgo did not have the best first half. Her second lowest scoring first half of the season, but she looks absolutely locked in to start the second half. And a great pass by Citron to find her open teammate. Washington's looking for King. Jordan Malcolm had a couple of threes in the first half of Pitt, as you said. And Notre Dame is kind of giving Pitt those looks. Pitt is getting some looks from three. Notre Dame is in the zone, and they're allowing Pittsburgh to take some looks. They have to make them. Pitt's got to be able to knock down some of those. If not, this game could continue to get a bit out of hand. But they're, Pitt's getting good looks, and Notre Dame's okay with them taking it, but they've got to be able to make some.
Eight to shoot now. There is the shot from Jordan. Hidalgo, eight points in the first half, 11 now in the game. Citron, Westbelt. Washington's able to hang on. She's playing with three fouls for the Panthers. Timerson making some good moves to the basket. Jordan had another look at it. Jordan's been rebounding it really well. It's those kind of shots. If she could make a few more of those, especially on those offensive boards, Pitt could claw its way back in. Timerson whistled for the foul as Hidalgo is driving to the basket. Second personal on Jazz Timerson. Very determined Hannah Hidalgo out on the floor today for Notre Dame. Coming off that record-setting 35-point performance in the win at Georgia Tech on Thursday. And of course, that was off of the then record-setting performance of 34 in the win at UConn. Most ever by a freshman in a single game and at her, Notre Dame. Her frustration with her first half, to me, is what makes her different because she's treating every game like it's a massive game. She's treating this game like it's a UConn game. She's so mad about her performance in the first half. A lot of freshmen would say, okay, this, this team has one win in the ACC. Maybe I don't have to be as locked in. She's telling me the opposite with the way she's reacting to some of those missed shots. Westbell getting hand onto the basketball. Thought she had the clean steal as it went off of a pit player, but it's going to stay with the Panthers. Westbell really coming into her own. I mean, it's hard to say that for a player that has been as consistently good as she has been since she's come to Notre Dame, but finding a new level of herself, maybe in the mental side of the game this year. She is, Jen, and she was so good against UConn. We talked about Hidalgo and how she played in the win over UConn, but Maddie Westbell was so important for Notre Dame in that big win, made massive shots, was able to expand her range, made big shots in that game too. And you mentioned her mindset. I read that article that Notre Dame put out about mindfulness and wellness and some meditation that Westbelt has started doing that's helped her in her mental game. And I just finding that balance. Good finish there from Jordan. Eight points now and something to be mindful of. Hidalgo picked up her third personal foul on that last play. There is Westbelt. Great pass too. That was an excellent pass by Anna DeWolf, the Fordham transfer, and just really good position inside by Westbelt. Look at DeWolf. DeWolf. Defense. Should have had the offense. She was too wide open. Gosh, that's the worst feeling in basketball. When you have a wide open layup in transition and you just overthink it. Oh, man. I'm did, cringing over here for her, Jim. She did everything right up until that <laughs> final touch. Washington. Hidalgo off the bounce. Westbelt back to Hidalgo. Acrobatic move to the basket. Jump ball to call. It's going the other way. Panther basketball. Maddie Westbelt finds a cutting Hannah Hidalgo. The thing about Hidalgo, too, is that I feel like she just has no regard for her body. She will throw her body all over the place. And that time, probably trying more to draw a foul than make the layup. But Jen, that's what happens when you're young, right? You feel like you can bounce back from every every fall you take on the floor. We know better as we, we get know a better, little, yes. a little older in age. It all go dished it to Citron just right through the fingertips. Coming your way on Saturday, nothing but net. That'll be after our men's basketball matchup, 8.30 Eastern. The crew will break down the night in the ACC with highlights and analysis. Look ahead to the best matchups on the schedule. Coverage you can only find in one place, right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Jordan left it short, but King there for the rebound. She's been quiet for Pitt in this third quarter. I don't think Pitt is targeting her enough inside. This Notre Dame zone, Pitt's playing into it. They're taking threes, they're taking long twos, and they're not knocking them down, but Hannah Hidalgo is. Big three-point bucket from the right wing. 
Jen. So much arc on that shot. My goodness, Hannah Hidalgo. She has, is making her presence a part of the story. She is. She has seven points in this quarter, has come out firing from three to absolutely pure shots from Anna Hidalgo. Jen, that's what differentiates her for me. We look at what she can do with her, how she can impact the game in all sorts of ways. The steals, steals numbers a little down today, Jen. Maybe she'll <laughs> work on that because she leads the nation in steals. But the way she shoots the three is different. If she had all this talent and was doing what she was doing as a freshman, but only shooting maybe 28% from three, it would still be impressive. But what takes her to me to a different level is that she is a 40% three-point shooter. She's so quick with her first step, and you have to respect the three ball. So how the heck do you guard her one-on-one? -on -one? It's almost impossible, and that's why you're seeing more and more teams play zone against Notre Dame, because they just can't contain her if they play man-to-man. -man. There is a basket from Leah King. We were wondering if she would start to imprint on this game a little more. Nine now for King, and a 1,000 in her career. Hidalgo crossing over, starting to feel it. She is, she is. And on the other end for Pittsburgh, Leah King has to touch the ball every play. I, I, and I feel like Coach Verdi would agree with me here after talking with him at shoot around. She's got to be involved in almost every offensive possession because of how valuable and how good she is for this Pitt team. But Notre Dame doing everything they can to keep her away from the ball. I know, keeping it alive. King has it now, driving with her right, looking to dish over to Washington. It's through a lot of traffic. There was a foul called on the Irish. So Washington will be shooting free throws, trying to pick up some points from the line for Pitt. She beat Kelly of the great work that the KO Cancer Fund is doing, raising money for life-saving cancer research. Underserved program to provide access, quality cancer health care, unite people in the fight against all cancers affecting women. And you just saw Tori Verdi. He knows very much what that battle is like. His wife, Heather, is a breast cancer survivor. And in fact, she just passed the five-year cancer-free mark. So we are so happy to hear that. She was honored when Coach Verdi was coaching at UMass before a Play for K game back in 2019. But this is just, a, it's a disease that hits so close to home for so many of us. It's a perfect example, Jen. It affects everybody in, in some way, shape, or form. So glad to hear about Coach Birdie's wife. And my favorite uh, K Yaoism, Coach Yaoism, is when life kicks you, let it kick you forward. That's my favorite one. I think it just sums things up perfectly about how your attitude can affect so much in life. And really great that we can be a part of these, Jen, and the Play for K initiative that happens every year in this league. Maddie Westbell now with 13 in the game for Notre Dame. Eight boards for her as well. She's been the leading rebounder and, and so consistent offensively for Notre Dame, not just in this game, but really all season. Good hands defensively. Bransford nearly got it away. Nine on the shot clock now. Washington realizing it gets it over to Malcolm off the mark for three. 17 in the game now for Hidalgo. Watson working inside and is fouled. Kylie Watson coming off that season high 19 point performance against Georgia Tech where she weighed eight of 10 from the floor, had nine rebounds, tied a career high with four assists. Still scoreless in this game. What changes that with the first free throw? Thursday, get ready. Sit down and watch my friend Kelly Graham like ACC PM starting at four. Here, you're filling in there. And then we've got a doubleheader women's hoops. Definitely keep an eye on that 8 o'clock matchup. Virginia Tech, NC State. The Hokies getting the win on the road in Chapel Hill today. And then nothing but net, your favorite women's hoop show right here on ACCN. We are so excited, Jen Hildreth. Shout out to the ACC Network. Brass, the people up at the top for allowing us to go. And then shout out to NC State for accommodating us. Cannot wait to be on site for one of the biggest matchups of the ACC season with NC State and Virginia Tech.
Notre Dame still has to play both of these those teams on their schedule, which could decide so much in this ACC. Yeah, they could. And Watson, fueled by the free throws, now has her first field goal. She's got four, the lead just like that, up to 20. And Pitt, the, the big issue for Pitt in this quarter has been their offense, truly. They've only scored six points. This zone has smothered Pittsburgh because they haven't been able to knock down threes and open things up inside. And Notre Dame is just kind of collapsing on Leah Toot King. Hannah Hidalgo with a great pass inside to Kylie Watson. Strong move up and under. And giving that point mm -hmm. to Hannah Hidalgo saying, <laughs> thanks for the assist there, little freshman. She barely looks like a freshman, though, <laughs> Hannah Hidalgo. King. Tough shot, falling away. Tough pass. DeWolf had to go through a lot of hands to try to find the corner. It went off of a pit hand last, so Notre Dame will keep it. And the DeWolf, though, what a career. She had at Fordham in her four years there. She's already over 2,000 points in her career. She did that against the Panthers the first time around this season, reached that 2,000 point mark. That is a lot of points. Yes, sure. it is. Three time first team all A10 selection. Malcolm. Panthers need some points. Not going to get it there. I'm sure Coach Verdi is familiar with Anna DeWolf as he was at UMass for such a long time. Ooh, that, yeah, that was a block right there. I've seen some good ones on both ends in this game. Travel called after the block. Leah to King. Block this with some attitude. What a play by Leah Tuking. It's hard to remember that she's only six feet tall. Yeah. She plays so much bigger than just six feet. Only player in the country averaging 19 points, 10 rebounds, two steals, and 1.7 blocks, Leah Tuking. And doing it at six feet tall. I mean, you could argue, Kelly, the numbers that she's put up have, have been all ACC type numbers. It's tough with the team having the lack of success that they've had so far. But to average 19.2 and 10.1 shoot 55 percent and those numbers only going up for the most part in ACC play. I mean, that's really impressive. It is. And I do think she will be in consideration for an all ACC spot. The problem that we have in this league, and it's obviously going to get worse because the ACC is adding SMU, Cal, and Stanford, is there are only so many spots. And there are 15 teams and then going to be 18 teams. So perhaps they might consider expanding how many players get on those teams because it's very hard to do so with how deep this league is. I think she's a legitimate candidate for the ACC's most improved player. Right now, for me, it's Leah Tu King and Isaiah James from NC State. And of course, Isaiah James being on the number five team in the country is probably going to help her in that regard. But there's no doubt Leah Tu King is right there in the conversation for one of the most improved players in the ACC, if not the country. Foul on the floor. You want to talk player of the year? You want, you want to have that discussion? Because I think you have a candidate in this building here today. Yes, you do. Really? You definitely do. I think ACC player of the year is still yet to be determined because we have so much left in February and specifically Notre Dame and Virginia Tech still have to play. But right now, I think it's between Hannah Hidalgo and Liz Kitley. I also think DeAsia Fair is in the mix and should be in the mix. But when you look at Hannah Hidalgo's numbers, she, the way she does it on the defensive end is what separates her. She's leading the nation in steals, over five steals per game, and averaging 25 points per game, and then everything else that she does. Liz Kitley, of course, her rebounding numbers and her defensive presence as well. I think a lot of it's going to be determined for me, Jen, when those two play. Yeah. And that's all the way on February 29th. So we have a while <laughs> to wait. But as a voter for me, I think I will put a good bit of stock in that head-to-head -head matchup. A lot could come down to that game there, but a lot of games to play in between. And this quarter has been all Irish. West Bell adding a couple more to her total. Jayla Jordan picking up the foul. West Bell has been so good in the paint today 
for Notre Dame, going up against that pit zone. She's made good decisions. She's also been passing the ball well. Ball well from that position, but also looking for her own number. Sometimes I feel like Westbelt has to be a bit more aggressive, and she's been doing that lately and definitely doing that in this game. Double-double for Westbelt, 15 points, 12 rebounds in the game. Panthers have started to pick up some points from the free throw line. Jordan has done that. Six points in this quarter, four of them from the line. Blocked this time. Bransford leading the break. And DeWolf in no hurry. Hidalgo getting another breather on the bench. An almost identical shot clock and game clock here. Who you like with Hidalgo on the bench? You feeling Westbelt? I'd love to see hit Westbelt on the pop here. Or Citron, never a bad option. King takes it from midcourt, but Notre Dame. Call a game, and the in-game host said to the fans at the break here that Notre Dame was coming off a win over UConn, which of course we know, and those UConn fans were really loud, so she wanted these Notre Dame fans to get as loud for the fourth quarter. Well, what are you looking for here in the fourth quarter, Kelly? Both if you're Notre Dame wanting to finish strong and also if you're Pitt, you need to try to get something more positive happening. Yeah, for Pittsburgh, I think specifically, Ooh. it's really hard with what Notre Dame's doing in their zone because it's hard to get the ball to Leah Two King. They're packing it in. I, th I would love to see these Pitt guards grow up a bit and make some plays. And for Hannah Hidalgo, you know, she hasn't scored less than 20 since January 7th. Well, Can she get over that mark? <laughs> She's at 19 now. <laughs> Can she get to her average? I think is the question for Hidalgo. She's only 5 of 13 from the field in this game. Had to be careful there defensively going for that steal. She's playing with three fouls. Hey, I mean, look at the numbers. Look at the length around King as she gets the ball. I still would rather her be taking a shot for Pittsburgh just because of how, how efficient she can be and how effective she can be. That's what Tori Verdi told us. He said he's telling his guards, actually, he's usually yelling at his guards from the bench, get it into King, and he wants her demanding it, too. The thing with Notre Dame as well, Jen, is because of the injuries and because of their lack of depth, you have all those players over there in shooting shirts that are out. They can't really take their starters out as Hannah Hidalgo hits another one. The starters are going to stay in for the most part because they don't really have as many other people to put in. But you know what? We're fine with that because Hannah Hidalgo is going to keep shooting. Hidalgo putting on a show. Irish out in think pink game. Hard to play for Kay. And another special performance from freshman Hannah Hidalgo, who it felt like Kelly Pitt did a pretty good job of defending in the first quarter, at least. She only had one point, but since then, she's gone back to her usual ways. She has. In that first quarter, she missed a few free throws, missed some layups. That was uncharacteristic of her. You could tell she was frustrated, was able to lock back in. But also Pitt played Notre Dame in a zone to start the game. And that limited it all go a bit just because she can't penetrate as much in his own. But I thought Maddie Westbound was so good opening that zone up for Hidalgo and scoring on the inside, leading to some good looks from the outside. And then, Jen, as I said before, the thing that differentiates Hidalgo for me from other really talented guards is that she's an elite three point shooter. So you can't give her anything. You can't lay off her a bit so that she doesn't go past you because she can shoot the ball. And that's incredibly difficult to guard, as we've seen in the second half. <laughs> it all go four of eight from three in the game. All of those but one coming in the second half. And some more chances off great effort from the Irish coming. The crowd applauding that effort. Watson going to work with the left. as we're seeing her build off that Georgia Tech game that you referenced earlier, Jim, where she was so good 
But this is a tough move from Kylie Watson, the up and under and finishing with the left. She was patient inside, knew how much time she had on that shot clock, pumped up and then went through and finished on the left-hand side. That's a tough move. That's a patient move from the veteran post player. Really a breakout game, that performance against Georgia Tech. 19 points, nine rebounds. <laughs> Compare that to the previous five, and does she continue to build off of that? Does Notre Dame need her yes. to continue to do that? Notre Dame does, and we've seen ever since Dodson, Maya Dodson, who was so good for Notre Dame a couple of years ago, we haven't seen a post player truly emerge in the middle and be the go-to five for Notre Dame, someone you can count on night in and night out. And if Kylie Watson continues to play like she is and can start peaking right now in February, that's gonna help Notre Dame tremendously. As Neil Ivey said, surviving February was on the agenda when we asked how things were going. It's gonna feel that way for a lot of ACC teams. A lot of tough games coming up across the league. Nobody liking that foul call. Hidalgo going for the steal, that's her fourth. And that's going to put her on the bench. And that's something that Hannah Hidalgo is going to have to be aware of throughout her career, but especially this year, her foul trouble, because she is so aggressive as a defender. And, you know, you get the one touch on the ball handler, and then the second touch should be a foul. She's got to be aware of where she is in the foul count throughout the game. Wow, the level of difficulty on that take by Leah Tu King was quite high. She finished, had to dribble through three defenders, finished with her left. She's got 11 now. But Jen, overall, back to Hidalgo, I think she has handled her foul trouble well in this game. Picked up two in the first half, but just picked up her fourth about halfway through the fourth quarter. You'll, you'll take that if you're Coach Ivy. And certainly has not let off being aggressive on, right, on both right. ends of the floor. Because you never want, her. you don't want her to change how she plays because how she plays is so special. You just want her to be smart about it, which I think she was. King finding an opening. Better from the pit offense. And no surprise, it happens when they find number two. It's also hard for Pitt to find King when the ball pressure is so good. And of course, Hannah Hidalgo's not out there right now, so there's a little less <laughs> ball pressure for those passes. Block, but Westfeld sticking with it. DeWolf for three. Anna DeWolf can flat out shoot the rock. She has been such a good addition for Notre Dame in the transfer portal, bringing her in from Fordham. She's been invaluable to them this year. DeWolf, number two all-time at Fordham and three-pointers made. 238 in her four-year career with the Rams. King. Great pass. Yeah, tried to pass it off last time, too. She draws so much attention. The high post is much more open for Pitt without Hidalgo in there because Hidalgo digs. She, she will help off for a second and help back. And, keeps the player at the high post on their toes. So it's much more difficult to play out of the high post when Hidalgo's in the game. Citron had time to set it up and knock it down. Her first point since halftime, she's got 15. Citron continues to be so efficient. One of the most efficient players in the country and feels like she is starting to really get back to herself, how she was last year and before that injury this year. Out nine games with a knee sprain, came back January 7th against North Carolina. Since scored her 1,000th point, did that at UVA. Hutcherson. Paint was defended well by that Notre Dame zone. Nobody there to rebound. And in a sense, we knew Pitt was going to give up some offensive rebounding because they wanted to get back in defensive transition and not allow the Irish to get out and run. In the first half, I thought Pitt did an excellent job of not letting Notre Dame get out and run. But in the second half, Notre Dame was able to do more of that. 
Some of it was just the turnovers from Pittsburgh, 16 in this game, Notre Dame only with eight. But like Coach Birdie was saying, he had to pick his poison. His team is a very good offensive rebounding team, and they're still winning the rebounding battle here today. But he had to give up some of those offensive boards and send players back to do his best to keep Notre Dame out of transition. Bransford. Watson tried to tap it back. Timerson and the Panthers on the break, out of bounds. It'll stay on this end with Pitt. Aaron Battle out on the floor, freshman out of Sewell, New Jersey. The King somehow left wide open on the inbounds. She now has 15. Double-double for King today. Her 13th of the season. She had 12 coming in. That ranks second in the ACC. 15 points, 10 boards for King. And what a finish on the other end. Jayla Jordan putting her hands in the air, but everything going right for the Irish on offense. These Notre Dame post players and these up and unders, they're loving them in this fourth quarter. And Nat Marshall, the great move and a really tough finish inside. First points of the game for Natalia Marshall, senior for the Irish, having her best year. Reminder to support the KOW Cancer Fund. This is the Play for K game. We told you earlier what it means to Nat Marshall, why she wears number 15 for one of her former coaches who passed away from cancer. And you see the information there. You can support and donate at KOW.com. The KAL Cancer Fund in partnership with the WBCA and the V Foundation for Cancer Research. And Jayla Jordan playing with four fouls, still playing hard on this end of the floor. Draws the foul from Notre Dame. If there's one thing that I think Coach Ivy will really want to take from this film and focus on from this film, or one thing that Notre Dame can get better on, it's rebounding out of that zone. And the offensive rebounds for Pitt have piled up. They have 15 offensive rebounds in this game. They only have seven second chance points, so they haven't done as much damage. But the rebounding, that's something Coach Ivy emphasized to us when we talked to her before the game. That's something they want. she wants their name to improve upon. So it can be harder, Jen, to rebound out of a zone because you have areas, you don't have a man. So that's something that I'm sure Notre Dame will focus on as Pitt's been able to do a good job on the boards. Because you feel like playing zone is going to be a necessity at least part of the time for Notre Dame just with the lack of right. depth that they have, right? With their lack of depth. And you can still be super effective in it with Hidalgo at the top. And when you think back to some of those great Notre Dame teams recently, the 2018 national title team, they basically had six players. They played zone because of their lack of depth and because they couldn't afford to get in foul trouble. And it seemed to work out pretty fun, pretty well. They won the national championship. <laughs> Seem to remember you guys reminding Coach McGraw about that on Nothing But Net <laughs> yeah. when you were discussing this Notre Dame team. Thanks for watching, Jen. We appreciate you. Everybody should be watching <laughs> that show. It is the best way to get caught up. And you guys always keep me entertained, make me laugh. <laughs> we try. <laughs> That's Thursday nights after our women's basketball doubleheader here on ACCN. You can catch Kelly and the rest of our tremendous nothing but net crew. And now finally, Notre Dame able to get a few more players in off the bench for these final minutes. See, Sarah Sernugal is out there. Player who started her career as a walk on with the Irish. Becky Obinma transfer after three years at Pepperdine. Now on the team, Marshall and Bransford handling the basketball. Foul before Pitt can really get out and running with the basketball. And that will be the fifth on Marshall. She'll have to leave the game early. And Hidalgo coming back on the floor for the final minute 48. I'm surprised that Hannah Hidalgo's coming back on the floor. I don't think that's what Coach Ivy wanted to happen. Oh. Oh, okay, never mind. She's getting DeWolf. But still, that surprises me a little bit just 
you know, this is maybe the ACC player of the year, and this game is all but decided. Maybe it's saying, okay, you want to get out there? Let's see how you handle it. Oh, with four fouls, maybe so. Right? Maybe it's a test. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Also, I imagine that Hannah is one of those players that sits on the bench and annoys the coach and says, put me in, put me in. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go back in. <laughs> well, from what we've heard about the trash talking that has been a staple of Hidalgo since she arrived here, low-key trash talking yes. is what uh, Niel said. Boy, Jayla Jordan still really playing hard, continuing what has been a really good stretch for her. She started to come on. She's 13 points in this game. She's 9 of 10 from the free throw line. She's working a double-double with 10 rebounds, providing that second punch on the inside for Pitt, along with Leah Two King. Jordan finally wearing that Pitt jersey. Her dad, Gerald, played at Pitt. Had to watch her go play at three different schools, but now we can see her playing for the Panthers. All right, give you a look at what's coming up because, oh my, it ain't easy <laughs> for Notre Dame. No, it's not. Florida State has been ranked. Duke has been ranked. So you have Louisville, of course, on Thursday night, a big matchup, and then NC State as well. Florida State in there, Duke and Clemson. Every game, I know it's cliche, Jen, every game matters. But when you look at the tiebreakers at the top of this league for those top four seeds, every game does matter. So that Louisville game is going to be super important. And then NC State, because Notre Dame only plays them once, that game could be a big decider at the top of the standings. So when you talk about what's at stake for this Notre Dame team, they're on the hosting bubble right now, potentially, in the NCAA tournament. And yeah, they want to be in that top four to get the double bye in the ACC tournament. And of course, this is a team, ACC regular season champs a year ago, they'd also like to defend that title. The top four seeds in the ACC, it's going to be fascinating because I think there's six or seven teams that could end up there. And to me, if you get a top four seed in the ACC, you will most likely get a top four seed in the NCAA tournament with the way things are projecting right now. So, so much at stake, being able to host, of course, in the NCAA tournament, and then getting that double bye in the ACC tournament. For a team like Notre Dame with very little depth, a double bye would go a long way. The Irish at six and three at the moment will improve to seven and three with a victory here in ACC play. Gransford will fist pump after the basket and one opportunity coming. So that had the Irish in six coming into today's games. And you think about the teams at the top. Virginia Tech getting a win today. Syracuse getting a win. Louisville has a big game coming up. They will play tomorrow night at NC State. What a great matchup that should be. Always a tremendous atmosphere there with the play for Kay. And of course, Kay Yao's former school where she made her mark at NC State. That'll be special over on ESPN2 tomorrow night. Jordan, a couple more before this one's over for Jayla Jordan. Proving on her double-double, 15 and 10, but in the end, Kelly Graham, like Notre Dame, taking care of business at home. Too much Irish in this one, especially in the second half. 10 made threes for Notre Dame. 